Good morning, greetings, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, Skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. If you've got a health challenge you or a loved one may be dealing with, 844-236-6010 is our number. We can help you, 844 236 6010 if you want to contribute to the conversation or if you just have a success story you'd like to share 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side if you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the bright side please go to my websites brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com that's brightsideben.com pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com you can purchase longevity products off the website you can also sign up to join the bright side ben team off our website brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business, earn thank you checks associated with having your own business, get your products at the wholesale price, help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program all while you're working from your home office, working your as many hours as few hours or as many hours as you like. You can write off your stamps and your rent and your mileage and just all, enjoy all the perks of having your own business. Best perk of, uh, of all is being your own boss. And you can help spread the word about how important a good nutritional supplement program can be. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more info or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and click on the join the team link on the websites. Okay, welcome to the bright side. Last we spoke, we were talking about the importance of stimulation. Stimulation for health, specifically stimulation for skin health. We said one of the best ways to stimulate the skin is with acid, fruit sugar acid specifically. You can stimulate the skin with a washcloth. You can stimulate the skin with a dry brush or microderm abrasion where they shoot little crystals at your skin. These are all ways to stimulate the skin. And for sure, you're going to get the stimulatory benefits, more collagen, thicker, a thicker skin barrier, a more robust skin barrier, stronger, more vital skin. And you can get, you can enjoy these benefits just with a washcloth at home. But my favorite way to stimulate the skin, to keep the skin healthy is to use acid, low pH. Acid represents high energy. When something is acidic, it's spewing out energy. And when you uh, uh, put something acidic on, on the skin, all that energy that's spewed out is sucked up by the skin. Energy transfer occurs. And the energy is transferred from that acidic substance into the skin. And when that energy is transferred into the skin, it goes into the cells and it drives the cells. It it, it encourages the cells to be active. Acidity encourages activity. Acidity is a fountain of energy. Alkaline is a vacuum of energy. Inside the body, and for that matter, inside of cells, you want a slightly alkaline condition. You want a sucking up condition, a slight vacuum. That way the cells are assured that they're going to be pulling in electrical energy. That's way, that way the, the body in general will be assured that it's pulling in electrical energy, specifically from food. That's where the electrical energy comes from. This comes from food. And 
even before that, it comes from the sun, as we talked about with Dr. Jacob Liberman on uh, last Friday. Ultimately, all energy comes from the sun. Food is like an intermediary. Food carries the sun's energy. So we eat food. The sun's energy is released. Electrical energy from the sun is released from that food. And if we're in an alkaline state inside our blood that, uh, and inside cells, that energy from the sun via the food will get pulled in. If we're in an acidic state, that's not going to happen. That's why the acidic state inside the body is associated with, disease, with illness and with disease. It's a, it, it doesn't allow the system to absorb energy as effectively. It doesn't allow the system to suck up the energy that's derived from the food. Actually, that energy that's derived from the food requires oxygen to be released. So you got the sun. The sun stores its energy in food. We eat the food. And with the action of oxygen, the food is the food uh, it has its electrical energy released. That's called combustion, or that's called burning, or technically, if you're a scientist, you'll call it oxidation. And the reaction between the oxygen and the food releases the energy. That if we're in an alkaline state, that energy gets sucked up, and we're healthy. And by the way, this is why breathing techniques are so important. Correct breathing is so important because it assures there'll be plenty of oxygen to burn the food, to oxidize the food, to release the energy from the food that was trapped from the sun. I hope this isn't too much chemistry because it's really important. It's really helpful. That's why, by the way, the water you drink, the alkaline water, is silly. Now, I'm not saying water's not good, but to try to raise your pH or, or uh, make your system, the inside of your body, more alkaline by drinking water is silly. Correct breathing techniques, on the other hand, that'll do it. That's the main way we're supposed to be alkalinizing our, our blood is through correct breathing techniques. Same thing is true inside a cell. Inside the cell, you want to be slightly alkaline. You want that cell to be slightly alkaline. Now, if the cell is really working, if the cell is really under duress, guess what? It's going to start generating acid. Ultimately, when it starts generating acid, it's working really hard. It's under stress. Think about how when you, when you uh, lift weights to where you feel the burn. That burn is acid. Acid represents stress. It represents work. It's a high energy state. Hard work and acidity go together. Alkalinity is associated with rest. Anyway, when the cell is doing a lot of work, it's going to start generating uh, uh, excesses, um, excessive amounts of acid. When the cell generates uh, excessive amounts of acid, it's under a lot of stress, it's overworked, it's malnourished, it doesn't have enough oxygen, it will eventually explode. It will die. It will reach a point where it can't handle all that acid and it will literally die. It will explode. And guess what's going to happen? It's going to spew out acid all over the place. This is one of the reasons why, uh, no, this is the reason why degenerative disease shows up. Cell death leads to acidity. The, the, that, all that stuff that comes out of the cell requires that the body create a protective barrier. That's called inflammation. Or more technically, microinflammation. That microinflammation is there to protect the rest of the body from all that acid, among other chemicals that are spewed out from, uh, from dead cells. Ultimately, when, we have, when this happens a lot, you get lots of this microinflammation, and this is where we get sick. This is where we get diseases from. Cell death leads to inflammation, leads to more cell death, leads to more inflammation. What is it that's causing the cell death in the first place? Too much work and not enough nutrition and not enough oxygen. Starvation, suffocation, and toxification. So acidity is associated with disease. Acidity is associated with cell death. Acidity is associated with uh, uh, deficiencies in energy inside the body and inability to extract energy from food. Lack of electrolytes, by the way, sometimes that can be a problem because electrolytes are, are, are charged with, no pun intended, their job is to uh, help alkalinize the blood. So deficiencies in electrolytes, and by the way, the kidneys regulate the electrolytes. So kidney disease plays a role here too. If you're dealing with kidney disease, and many people are, many people are dealing with undiagnosed kidney disease. If your kidneys aren't operating as well as they should, What's going to tend to happen is you're not going to be able to control your pHs effectively. And if, you're making, if your cells are doing a lot of work and you're malnourished, again, your blood pH is going to go up. Don't think of, it's not like you want to force your blood, force your pH down though. The pH, or you, uh, you don't want to force the acid level down. The acid level is high because you're sick, because we're sick, because our cells are dying. Work on the cells and the acidity will take care of itself. And if you really want to lower your acid quickly, 
or raise your pH quickly, depending on how you want to say it. Breathe. Hunter's Angle. We are back on the bright side. I'm Farm Spen, and we have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, our truth treatment products, pH, skin care, skin health, ingredients you may have heard about, read about, and you want clarification on, or if you just have a success story you'd like to share or want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010. Is our number on the bright side, and we'll get your calls at the bottom of the hour, as we always do. We are on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific, 10 to 11 Central Time, and we're also 24-7 on the archive pages at benfuchsarchives.com and brightsideben.com. You can also search brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com and purchase longevity products off brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And if you are so inclined, if you're an entrepreneur or you're entrepreneurially minded, we would love to have you on the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can be in business for yourself. We can help you build your business, grow your business, and you can make money while you're helping change the world at the most fundamental level there is, which is the level of our personal health. Nothing else matters, friends, if your personal health is not where it should be. And I'm a political junkie and I read the news and I know what's going on out there in the real world, but guess what? None of that matters when you're sick. None of that matters. Nothing matters when you're sick. And if you're sick enough, you won't even, there's nothing else you'll be thinking about except your body. You don't want to get sick if you're not, and if you are sick, there are a thousand ways that you can improve your health. And it isn't that difficult. It has nothing to do with your doctor, and it has a lot to do with how we nutriate ourselves through, through foods as well as through nutritional supplements. And that's what Longevity is all about. If you're interested in joining a business with that mission, with that philosophy, if that's your mission and that's your philosophy as well, then you really do want to look into the Longevity business opportunity. And I highly recommend you call 866-735-2470 for more info. 866-735-2470 for more information. All right, so we're talking about acid and alkaline, all as it regards the skin. Inside of the body's alkaline, outside of the body's acid. Inside the body, you want a, an energy deficient state. It said nature abhors a vacuum, meaning whenever there's a vacuum, nature will come in to fill it up. So if you have a vacuum inside the body, energy will get sucked into the, into the vacuum. That's why the blood is slightly alkaline. You don't want the blood acidic because then it's going to be spewing energy and not sucking it up. Acidity is associated with illness. Acidity is usually a result of cell overwork. Cells are working too hard. They're under duress. They're not, they don't have enough oxygen. They don't have enough nutrition. And they're toxic. Ultimately, they'll die and explode. And this is where the whole, um, this is where the disease process begins. They spew their acid out. Inflammation follows. More cells die. More inflammation. And on and on and on. And it all starts from cells that are under duress, eventually dying, spewing out their acid. Alkalinization is best achieved through Correct breathing techniques. S SDR breathing, slow deep breathing. And you're alkalinizing on both phases of the breathing process. Both the inhalation and the exhalation tend to raise the pH. Inhalation generate, uh, pulls in oxygen. Oxygen is alkaline. Exhalation, blowing out carbon dioxide, blowing out CO2, also has an alkalinizing effect because CO2 is acid. So you're blowing off acid. By the way, when you blow off, when you exhale, you're also blowing off a, a burnt fat. If you're losing weight, you really want, or you're trying to lose weight, you really want to be ex exhaling or practicing your breathing techniques, I should say. Oxygenation helps burn fat, and all that re residual burnt fat comes out in the exhale. So, you know, most of the weight you lose when you lose weight comes out through your breath. So breathing is super duper important. SDR breathing, slow deep breathing, slow deep rhythmic breathing. Also, taking in electrolytes is important, making sure you're getting your potassium, your calcium, your sodium, and using or, or uh, processing those electrolytes correctly. What organ is it that processes those electrolytes? The kidneys. So if your kidneys aren't working as well as they should be, if you're dealing with full-blown kidney disease, full-blown kidney, kidney disease, you're definitely going to be acidic because the kidneys aren't handling your electrolytes correctly. And making sure that you're working on SDR breathing techniques if you're on dialysis or you're, uh, or you're uh, uh, dealing with any kind of kidney disease, even if you're not on dialysis. And I think something like 11 or 12% of Americans have some degree of 
chronic kidney disease. Breathing becomes extra important because you're already compromised at that P internal pH processing chemistry level if you have kidney disease and breathing can at least help mitigate some of that, that toxicity. SDR breathing, slow, deep, rhythmic breathing where the exhale, it, where you uh, exhale more than you inhale. You wanna exhale six to eight seconds, you wanna inhale four to six seconds, at least to start, ultimately you wanna do longer. It's hard to really breathe slowly, to inhale slowly and exhale slowly. You're gonna find that it's not that easy to do. Over time it becomes easier, but starting off with four seconds in, six seconds out, always wanna exhale more than you inhale, is a good place to be. In terms of the skin, the opposite is true. Healthy skin is not supposed to be relaxed. You don't want your skin relaxed. You want it dynamic. You want it active. The skin's a barrier. The skin is doing work. It's like a, a, a force field against microbes and against yeast and against attacking invaders. The skin is not supposed to be relaxed. It's supposed to be dynamic. It's not taking in energy the way our blood is taking in energy and the way our cells are taking in energy. You don't want it take in any, taking in things. You want it to take in nutrition maybe, but you don't want it to take in stuff, all kinds of stuff from the outside. So the skin has a, a built-in force field. The acid kind of pushes things out. So there's like a, a, a field of electrical energy around the skin. And it uh, uh, can be uh, related or associated with the acidity. Acidity is, a, is electrical energy. Skin has a high electrical charge, relatively high electrical charge. It's like putting out energy. It's a defense mechanism, a force field that repels the bad guys. Healthy skin is going to be slightly acidic. And by slightly acidic, I'm talking like in the fours and the fives. Remember the pH scale, just quick review. The pH scale goes from zero to 14. Zero to seven is the acid side. Seven to 14 is the non-acid or alkaline side. Seven is the middle. Inside the body, you're just to the right of zero. Uh, or just the right of seven, I'm sorry. Just to the right of seven, just to the right of neutral. So you're 7.4, 7.3, right in there. 7.38 7 is what they say. On the skin, the opposite is true. You're to the left, you're negative. You're, you're seven is neutral, you're around 4.5. And each pH point is, is 10 times. So it's a couple thousand, it's a, a thousand to ten thousand times more acidic than the inside of the body if it's at four. Healthy skin is going to be, you know, putting things out. It's going to be acidic. Eczema, on the other hand, dry skin, on the other hand, psoriasis, on the, on the other hand, they're associated with alkaline skin or alkaline pH. And if you're using a lotion, it's a standard body lotion, standard hand cream, standard skin product, guess what? It's alkaline. Same with soaps, same with cleansers, they're alkaline. We're constantly doing things to drive the pH of the skin upwards to make it more alkaline when it's supposed to be acid, when it's supposed to be healthy. Do you think you wanna use acidic things on your skin? You better believe it, and there's lots of ways to do it. When I was, one of the, my, the first products I formulated was an acid cleanser. Because I knew, I knew from pharmacy school and working for Blistex that the cleansers were alkaline, the skin's supposed to be pH. I'm like, well, you should, we should be using acid. And there's some great acids that have not only dropped the pH of the skin, but they also cleanse the skin. They have their own cleansing power. All right, we've got lots more to say about skin, skin health, pH, ingredients, glycolic acid. We'll do that in the uh, coming, coming days on the bright side. We're coming back with your phone calls at 844-236-6010 and more good health information on the bright side right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open. 844-236-6010. Hang on if you're on hold. We'll get to you. Uh, we will get to you uh, just a minute or two. I want to read a couple stories, and we do have lines open. 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. All right, from the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism, babies fed soy-based formula have changes in their reproductive tissue. Infants who consumed soy-based formula as newborns had differences in some reproductive system cells and tissues compared to those who used cow's milk formula or were breastfed. According to a new study, the researchers say the differences 
uh, we're not a, we're subtle and not a cause for alarm, right? But reflect the need to investigate the long-term effects of exposure to estrogen-like compounds found in soy-based formulas. No, they're right. It's not a cause for alarm. It's a cause to not drink soy. Give your baby soy milk, though. It's not. It's a cause for not avo for avoiding soy milk. The Estrogen-like compounds in soy and in really in all legumes have some degree, most legumes anyway, have some degree of estrogen effects. And legumes are peas and beans and such. So, uh, soy, though, is notorious for having uh, what are called xenoestrogens. Remember, plants, plants make these compounds. Xenoestrogens are like gluten. Xenoestrogens are plant compounds that plants make to defend themselves. It's really interesting how plants will make birth control for rabbits. That's what xenoestrogens are. Plant estrogens are birth control for rabbits. And they're made, not just rabbits, but they're made by plants to keep the rabbits from eating them and the other animals from eating them. But not, that, not the animals themselves, the descendants of those animals. So the, the plant is thinking a generation ahead. It makes birth control. And that's what xenoestrogens are. But the problem is, is we eat them. It's one thing if you eat a little bit of them, you know, your body has a detoxification system. But when we're pounded with them, especially in concentrated form, as in soy milk, one of the worst foods a human being can ever ingest is soy milk. Sorry to say, because of all that concentrated xenoestrogen. It's super concentrated. And give it to a baby? Oh, my God. There is no... You know, if you can't breastfeed, I, I, well, you're really, there's not much you could do because you can't duplicate. There's no way to duplicate what's in breast milk in a formula. It's not possible because there are so many different things in breast milk. There are, there are things we don't even know about in breast milk. Just the endocannabinoids that are in breast milk are important for, de for the development and the growth of the baby. Endocannabinoids stabilize stress hormone. You know, babies are born with elevated stress hormone levels if moms are under stress. The endocannabinoids in breast milk calm the baby down, relax the cortisol system. If you have, you know, if you're under duress when you're making a ba growing a baby, there's a very good chance that your baby is going to be sensitized to cortisol. That's going to affect him, for him or her for the rest of his or her life. Endocannabinoids in breast milk are there for a reason. You know, just going through the birth canal, even if everything goes, goes well, that's got to be a stressful event for a, for a, a fetus and an infant. So uh, breast milk contains endocannabinoids, relaxing substances that are important for growth, for, for development, and that are also important for keeping, uh, uh, stabilizing or antagonizing cortisol. That's not going to be in soy milk. In fact, soy milk probably spikes cortisol because of all the sugar that's in the, the soy-based formulas. There is... Very little good to say about any formula for a baby unless, you know, you got to do what you got to do if you can't make breast milk. Work on making breast milk. And you can work on making breast milk by relaxing your body, by making sure you're getting enough nutrients. One of the reasons we don't make, women don't make breast milk is because there's, they're under some kind of duress. All right. From... Uh, the Journal of Occupational and Environmental Medicine, one in four Americans suffer when exposed to common chemicals. University of Melbourne research, that's in Australia, researchers revealed that one in four Americans report chemical sensitivity with nearly half of this group medically diagnosed with so-called MCS or multiple chemical sensitivities, suffering health problems from exposure to common air pollutants like insect spray, paint, cleaning supplies, fragrances, petrochemical fumes. There's a phenomenon known as sick building syndrome. This especially affects workers who are in newer buildings. Newer buildings tend to have a lot of, of, of newer chemicals in the, in the paint and in the carpeting, in the co office, the, the printers and the toners. And if you're sensitive to chemicals, this could be a big problem. There's a really cool book called Detoxify or Die by Dr. Sherry Rogers, who, which talks about this. This was a book that was written in the 90s. I read it in the 90s. I think it was, might have been written in the 80s. And she didn't know about the, all the super high-tech chemicals that are out there now. But her point is very well taken, that if you have multiple, if you are sensitized to chemicals, or you're sensitive to chemicals, this could be a hidden cause of illness, a hidden cause of feeling lousy. Your building, sick building syndrome. What does that mean? Uh, what is a, a practical way we can address all this? 
Use bentonite clay. Make sure you're nutritionally supplementing. You're beyond tangy tangerine. Vitamin C is one of the all-time great detoxifying nutrients. And it's very underappreciated. And the, uh, the RDA, the, the uh, National Academy of Science, or whoever it is the, that determines these RDAs, they're not even nutritionists. They're scientists, whatever that means. Um, they tell you only need 60 milligrams a day of, of vitamin C. You need way more than 60 milligrams a day of vitamin C. 60 milligrams a day, or 100 milligrams, I think they raised it to now, 100 milligrams a day of vitamin C is uh, enough to keep you from getting scurvy, and enough to keep your body from dissolving into a puddle, which is what scurvy is. But it's not enough to detoxify all the crap that's in our air, not enough to detoxify the stuff that's in our buildings, especially if you've got multiple ke chemical sensitivities. And by the way... Vitamin C is important for keeping scurvy from happening, but vitamin C in foods contain something called bioflavonoids or flavonoids, which we've talked about on this show. And these flavonoids are also wonderfully detoxifying. So the best way to get your detoxifying vitamin C is a combination of your Beyond Tangy Tangerine plus lemons and limes and oranges and kiwis and any any fruits and vegetables that contain vitamin C because then you'll get the bioflavonoids, which not only are important for the vitamin C to work, but are also important for detoxification. They detoxify, they chelate toxicity on their own. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. It's that time again. Let's go to the phones and say good morning to John in Oklahoma. Good morning, John. How you doing, buddy? Doing great. How are you? I am good. How can we help you today? Um, I'm 30. And okay. I'm trying to work out again, gain some muscle, but every time I go in and do a hard workout, the next two or three days I get sick. Okay. And I think yeah. it has to do with dirty blood. Very likely could. Uh, you're, under, you're definitely under duress, so let's talk a little bit about you. Uh, you're 30. What's your height to weight? I'm 6'2 and 205. Okay, that ain't, that's not too bad. And do you have a history of working out, of being athletic, and were you a jock kind of thing, and, and you took some time off, and now you're back at it, or what's the deal? Um, I did CrossFit for a couple of years, but I got burnt out. Okay. So I, and, I'm, I basically and, haven't worked out for years or two. And are you on any medication or any health challenges, specific health challenges you're dealing with? Um, no, just that, basically. Okay, good. So you're not, you're not taking any drugs or anything? No, no medicine? No, just the uh, most of the 90. Okay, good. Okay, yeah, absolutely cleaning the blood is going to be a great strategy for you. Uh, making sure that you're oxygen oxygenating correctly is going to be important. Hang tight. we got to take a break, and uh, we'll finish okay. up when we come back. Okay? All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Back on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to John in Oklahoma. John? John, John? Yes, I'm here. Hey. I meant to tell you that I've had kidney stones and I'm addicted to sweet. Oh, well, none of that's helping you. None of that's All helping right. you. The, and the kidney stones, you've had, you've had more than one? I've had two. Oh, well, that's not good. Yeah, kidney stones are caused by cell death and an inability, uh, uh, saturation of the blood, a thickness of the blood, and cells dying. They okay. spew out their calcium, uh, or, or cells just being sick and not being able to take in calcium um, in combination with dirty blood. It, it is, it's a, basically, you're too young for all this to happen. Your body's kind of like, kind of like uh, dissolving a little bit. That's not good. And, and now the, the, fact okay. that you're getting, the fact that you're getting sick uh, after you work out, that's definitely not good. Does it happen all the time? Uh, especially on leg day, yeah. But okay. Okay, like sick, like you just feel like a cold kind of thing? Um, well, on the day of, I usually feel nauseous, and the next three days, I usually feel like I have a cold. Oh, yeah, that's none of that's good stuff. So here's what you want to do. After you work out, you want to make sure you're pounding nutrition, especially the B vitamins, electrolytes, and vitamin C. After you work okay. out. When you come home from the gym, do your BTT when you come home from the gym. 
Uh, also vitamin E, 400 IU when you come home from the gym. That's, you don't need, you should do that like throughout, sometime during the day, but at, you don't need to do it right when you come home from the gym. The, the water soluble nutrients you want to do when you come home right from the gym. Wouldn't hurt you to do the E either, actually, when you come home from the gym. I would get on something called alpha lipoic acid. Have you heard of that? Alpha I've heard about it from you, but I'm not sure exactly. I would get uh, start taking two to 400 milligrams of that after you work out. Okay. Also, uh, your OsteoFX. Make sure you get your magnesium and get yourself on bone broth protein. And then when you're uh, come home from a workout, do bone broth protein. Or if you want, um, okay. if you're up, if you're up for it, make chicken soup, or bone broth, chicken soup. You know where you dissolve the bones, keep it in the fridge. By the way, bone broth tastes delicious cold. I don't know if you ever tasted it cold. It's absolutely awesome cold. Uh, so you make your bone broth uh, and keep it in the fridge, and it's so refreshing when you come um, when you come home from a workout. You can do that too. Somehow load up with nutrients when you come back uh, from the gym. You will find that once you start building muscle, you're going to uh, your your cravings for sweets are going to be a little bit less once you get the protein in your system and you're building muscle and you're you're going anabolic. But it's it's gonna if you're eating a lot of sweets, that's going to cut into how well you build muscle. And it can definitely cause stress on the, on, the, uh, on the blood system. And your kidney stones could absolutely be, be related to the fact that you're eating a lot of sweets. Any kidney problem can be related to blood sugar problems. All right? Okay. So I hope Sounds that helps good. you. Good deal. hope that helps you. Anything else? One more question? Yeah. Uh, yeah, my mom had her gallbladder removed years ago and had yeah. never uh, recovered from surprise, it. Surprise, surprise. anything, basically. That's awful. I told her to tar- start taking the uh, digestive enzymes before and after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's gallbladder in a bottle. That's gallbladder in a bottle. But she should probably do more, too. I would do lecithin. Go have her go get lecithin granules. Do all this with meal, with her, especially fatty meals. Uh, all of this with, but with all meals, I would do it. Lecithin, bile salts, um, what else? Essential fatty acids, your ultimate EFAs, stomach bitters, Swedish bitters, something like that, apple cider vinegar, probiotics. There's a very important relationship. I know you probably know this because we talk about this on the program a lot. There's a very important relationship between probiotics and how we process fats. You might want to consider have her having used something called MCT oil, which is found in coconut oil, but she can get straight MCT oil uh, at a health internally? food store. Yeah, internally, exactly. Okay. It's a great source of energy for folks who have problems um, um, absorbing fats or using fats. MCTs go right to work. All right? I'm going to okay. motivate here, John. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate it. Thank and you. by the way, right. without a gallbladder, she's not going to be able to absorb her fat. Without a gallbladder, I think we lost John, but without a gallbladder, you can't absorb your fatty vitamins. So uh, it's, it's important not just to use fat absorption aids which help you absorb fats, but also just throw in some fatty vitamins too, like vitamin A and vitamin D and vitamin E and vitamin K. And also, um, when it comes to uh, fats, when it comes to a, a fat absorption, there are minerals that are handled by the fat absorption system, zinc in particular. Same with selenium. Both zinc and selenium require bile for their absorption and their utilization. Without a gallbladder, you're not going to make bile as effectively. You could be zinc deficient and selenium deficient very, very efficiently. So it's important to supplement with those two minerals. Zinc in particular is important for building. Without zinc, you can't build tissue. And uh, without zinc, without a gallbladder and then without zinc, you are accelerating the aging process very dramatically. All right, Robert in... Las Vegas. Good morning, Robert. How you doing? I'm doing well, uh, Big Ben. Thanks for taking my call. Quickly, um, a friend of mine told me that cancer cells cannot exist in an alkaline environment. If that is true, if uh, walk me through that. Why is that true, if it's true? Well, as, uh, cancer cells are, are, utilize, are burning through energy really quickly. They need, mm-hmm. to have, they need to have a dynamic system. Acid, uh, when, the, when uh, the body is really acidic, cells develop this secondary way of growing, this second way of u- utilizing energy, and that second way of utilizing energy is an acid. It, it involves acid processing. And so it kind of, it's kind of a coping mechanism. Cancer is a cell that's learned to, to live in acid, basically. It's a, a coping mechanism. So the acid environment is important for cells to grow because this, or for cancer cells to grow because this is how cancer cells have. It's it's the way they've handled a regular cell has handled an acidic environment. Is that's it's kind of it's it's more like you don't want to look at it like the way your friend said how cancer can't live in an alkaline environment. It's more like cancer is a cell. A cancer cell is a cell that has learned to adapt to an acid environment. 
It is an, yeah. it, it, requ it requires acid for it to divide really rapidly. Remember, acidity is a very fast state. It's a dynamic state. So oxygen alkalinization keeps that cell from turning cancerous is a better way of looking at it. Gotcha. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. Thanks, bud. Oh, that's it. Okay, good. Thank you. Take care. Um, and the best way to alkaline is uh, with oxygen. And you've probably heard it said that acid, uh, cancer cells can't live in an oxygen-rich environment. That's because the oxygen represents alkalinity. Now, you can say, well, you're going to deep breathe, and that's true, and that's a great way to do it to make sure you're getting oxygen. But remember, inflammation, especially caused by dirty blood, will also keep oxygen from being delivered. If the blood is inflamed, and yes, your blood can be inflamed as well as the tissues. If your blood is inflamed or if tissues are inflamed, oxygen can't get to the cell. So you can breathe deeply, and that's important, of course. But if you have an inflammatory condition, if cells are dying and breaking down, even the deep breathing isn't going to help necessarily as much because you're not getting the oxygen delivered because of the inflammation. All right. Let's go to uh, Truth Raider in Oregon. You get the last word. What's up, Truth Raider? How you doing? Mucho todo. Buenos días, Benjamin. Y para todos. What's, what's <laughs> up, Truth Raider? Speak in English so everybody understands. I'm talking today about pico de gallo. Okay. You know the better. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Not everybody can do tomatoes, though. You know, tomatoes are a great source of vitamin C, got a lot of nutrients in them, but not everybody can do tomatoes. If you're trying to, you're saying you're going organic and you're all vegetarian and you're only eating vegan or whatever and you're still sick, you got to look at like things like potato, like to, uh, uh, tomatoes and potatoes. They're nightshades. You, have you heard of Boy. nightshades, Truth Raider? Indeed. Nightshades, and people have uh, people can react to those nightshades, especially if you're dealing with rheumatoid arthritis or any kind of arthritis or any inflammatory condition. Actually, nightshades contain toxins. This is where vegetable. This is one of the classic examples of vegetables being poisonous. Vegetables being toxins. Your nightshade vegetables are literally toxins and or literally contain toxins and poisons. And that I find that very ironic for vegans and vegetarians out there who are always ripping on meat. And not that I eat a lot of meat, by the way, but nonetheless, meat doesn't have any of those compounds in it. Only vegetables do. How do you like that? What were you going to ask me, Truth Raider? Yes, I wanted to tell you my my particular recipe for okay. pico de gallo. You got 30 seconds. We're out of time here, so go quick. Hey, rápido. Mucho cilantro, the green cilantro. leafy spicy. Love it. Uh, Great chelating agent. Well, go ahead. Loads of cherry sweet multicolored tomatoes. Okay. Red, red onion. And then scallions you put in there, a bunch of some delicious best that you can find, jalapeno sauce that doesn't burn your mouth out. No ghost peppers. Don't add ghost pepper. And just uh, a combination of just uh, sweet water. I use like a water that, that's uh, purified water. <clears throat> Blends up really good with hot sauce. Maybe a dab of something, a little bit of sweetener, just a little bit. Salt, garlic, garlic salt I put into Ooh. it. And You're making my mouth water. water, but I'm out of time here, Truth Raider. But thank you. Yeah, I Is that? What the benefit? What's the benefit? Oh, that's that's an, there's endless benefits. That's an that's an amazing meal or amazing food right there. How you described it. it, the cilantro, the shallots, and the onions. You know all that stuff. That's just amazing stuff. Uh, call back tomorrow. We'll talk. Thanks, Truth Raider. All right, that's it. We're out of time. Thanks for listening to the Bright Side. Please check out our websites: brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, and truthtreatments.com for all our true skin health products, including our new biomimetic priming mist coming out any day now with fulvic minerals at truthtreatments.com. Thanks for listening, friends. Have a wonderful, beautiful, awesome day. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.